Last night saw the launch of the 4th Caribbean Youth Leaders Summit at the Radisson Fort George Hotel in Belize City. With Belize being the host country for this year's summit, the Substantive Minister for Youth, Patrick Faber, spoke of the importance of the event and the benefits of Belize being the host country, as well as the advancements being made by the Department of Youth Services, with special emphasis on the fact that the department is staffed mostly with young persons. It gives us a chance to, of course, expose what it is we have been doing here in Belize as it relates to uh, encouraging our young people, but especially youth leadership. Uh, Belize, I think, is at an exciting point. We have done so much in the last few years with the uh, passing of the National Policy for Youth, uh, getting the Youth Council together uh, across the the country. In fact, we have now five uh, n councils and, and, of course, the national council. So we see a lot of work now forming. I I'm very pleased that the work that is going on at the Department of Youth Services, which is primarily led by the young people. Uh, I recall uh, last year, in fact, when we had the National Youth Awards, and I look forward to this year's National Youth Awards. It grows every time, and we see so many talented young leaders in this country. And so we get to showcase a bit of that uh, over the next few days, but we also get to see the talent that comes from all over our region, uh, this, this region that uh, Belize belongs to. Also speaking at last night's ceremony was the U.S. Ambassador to Belize, Carlos Moreno. According to Ambassador Moreno, the U.S. Embassy continues to support initiatives for young persons, including leadership activities, educational initiatives, among others. It is and has always been a priority for our uh, U.S. government, whether it's through our Youth Ambassadors Program, the Young Leaders of the America Initiative, or the 100,000 Strong in the Americas Program. In all of those ways, I'm delighted really to have this opportunity to participate and to welcome uh, this group. And your agenda, Agenda 2030, Framing Car Caribbean Youth Development from Rhetoric to Action is so appropriate. But suffice it to say that the region does not offer enough opportunities for its young people who experience more crime, more unemployment, slower economic growth, and uh, discord. That said, there have been some really significant major improvements in the lives of the youth in the past several years. And in 2002, only 35 percent of the 20 to 24 year olds had received a secondary education. By 2012, that number was up to 60%, so tremendous improvement. And really, as young people have become more educated, they've become more politically active. And I'm sure in this group here, there are a number of you, the majority of you who are politically active, you must vote. And given the demographics of the Caribbean, your votes, if organized, if focused, will have a great potential to promote change in the region. And that's why we at the embassy support uh, programs like this. Programs like this are powerful, they're important, and frankly, there are no easy answers for the problems that youth in the region face. And I couldn't agree more with Minister Faber that those solutions must come from you, the young. The summit continues right through to Friday, September 30.